Hi friends, today on One Minute Math, we're gonna give you the full length explanation of special right triangles, which you might also call 45, 45, 90 triangles or 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Uh, this is a result of the Pythagorean theorem. These special right triangles is actually an incredibly long lasting, like foundational concept to be familiar with that's gonna see you through a lot of future math concepts. So this is a good one to make sure that you understand, but it's really just noticing a pattern in two different kinds of triangles and being able to quickly determine the sides of those triangles based on using that pattern. It's really all we're doing. Um, there's very little computation that goes into this. It's mostly just like recognizing what's happening. All right, so our first special right triangle, it's a right triangle, it's got a four, uh, 90 degree angle, and it's special because it's isosceles. You might remember isosceles means that two sides and two angles of this triangle are going to be congruent to each other. So in this case, those congruent angles each measure 45 degrees. 45 plus 45 plus 90 makes 180 there's a special right triangle. This other special right triangle we call 30, 60, 90. So his angles are 90 degrees for the right angle, then 60 for the bigger one and 30 for the smaller one. And why he's special is because he's actually half of an equilateral triangle. If I had another copy of this triangle right next to it, it would actually make an equilateral triangle altogether. So these triangles are both special. They're both right triangles, but they're both, they both have something unique and special about them that makes them a little bit more I don't know, interesting and worth talking about than if I just said, here's a right triangle, find this missing side, okay? We know we can do this. We know that if I give you two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third side just straight up using the Pythagorean theorem. If you have any questions about that, search my Pythagorean theorem videos. There's a one minute video and an extended cut um, to help you figure out how to use the Pythagorean, to find Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side if you know two. Here's the interesting thing about special right triangles. We're gonna find all of the sides knowing just one. So our first challenge to develop this idea is going to be, if I give you an isosceles right triangle and I have a leg of length three, can I find all of the other sides of this triangle? Uh, and because it's isosceles, I can actually find the, the other leg pretty easily. Isosceles means two sides and two angles are congruent. Well, congruent means same length. If this bottom leg down here is three, then this other leg also has to be three. Now I can just use the Pythagorean theorem, three squared plus three squared, that would be nine plus nine is 18. So the hypotenuse is going to have a length of the square root of 18. I said simplest radical form. So that means I am not going to type this in my calculator and get a decimal. Instead, I'm going to simplify it by calling 18, nine times two. The square root of nine is three and the square root of two, I just have to call two. Do you think it is a coincidence that I've got threes on all three sides? If you said no, you're right. Just for funsies, let's pretend we're gonna do this whole problem again, but instead of three, my favorite number is eight, so we're gonna make this three and eight. And say, if I know one leg is eight, could I find all of the other sides of my right triangle? And again, we're going to have eight and eight and mystery side over here. Um, let's call that X, eight squared plus eight squared. That would be 64 plus 64. I'm not even going to write out what that is. 64 plus 64 is 128, but I'm not going to write 128. I'm going to call it two times 64 because that will help me in this next step. Square root of two times 64. That's like the square root of 64 times square root of two. The square root of 64 is eight. Bam eight roots of two. This is not a coincidence. Eight, eight, eight. So the moral of the story here is if I have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, if I tell you this angle is 45, this one's 45, and this one's 90, and whatever this side is, let's say it's uh, 365. This other side is three, the other leg is also 365, and the hypotenuse will be 365 times the square root of two. And that's how we write it. If you haven't made peace with um, the, this form, the simple, simplest radical form of numbers yet, just take a deep breath, hold your nose if you have to, and say, oh, it looks gross, I don't like it, but this is how we report numbers in higher level math. I could type 365 times square root two in my calculator and get a decimal. And if I was going to Home Depot to buy a length of string that of this length, that's the number I would tell them. But if I'm talking to another math person or I'm writing my, my answer on the SATs, I'm gonna write 365 times the square root of two, and that's my final answer. It's actually a better form, believe it or not. All right, second challenge. So now we've got an equ equilateral triangle, and its side lengths are all eight, and I would like to find basically all three sides 
of this right triangle that I get over here. I think the question I worded was, I would like to find the height of this equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to make a nice 90 degree angle there. This angle is 60 because it's equilateral. And this angle is 30 because the whole angle was 60 and it's cut in half. Uh, because this triangle is equilateral, this whole side down here is 8. So it is not a stretch to conclude that this much has to be 4. That would be the short leg of my right triangle. And now I've got 4 squared plus x squared equals 8 squared. I have a Pythagorean theorem problem. 4 squared is 16. 8 squared is 64. Do a little subtractorino here. x squared equals, it's going to be 48. So x will equal the square root of 48, which again, I am not going to type in my calculator for a decimal. I'm going to simplify it. 48 is 16 times 3. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 roots of 3, or 4 times the square root of 3. That's what I'm going to report as my height. And do you notice this non-coincidence? 4, 4. And there's a clear relationship between 4 and 8. 4 is half of 8. 8 is twice 4. If we did the same thing, let's start with another number. Let's start with 10. All right, and I'm just going to imagine here the other half of my equilateral triangle. If this whole side down here is 10, then this much is going to be 5. The short leg is 5. And to find this one, 10 squared take away 5 squared. That's 100 take away 25. That's 75. It's x squared equals 75. The square root of 75 would be the square root of 25 times 3. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 roots of 3. Not a coincidence, right? In general, whatever this little side is, that very smallest leg, the medium leg, the middle side is gonna be x times the square root of three and the long side or the hypotenuse will be two times that x. This is what gives us our patterns for the special oops, special right triangles. Um, this would definitely be something I'd write on some flashcards. Uh, take the time to memorize these patterns. You can use the x's like I have. Some people like to write them with like blobs, blob, 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 two. Um, however, you can remember that what the numbers that you're given, those are the numbers that are going to fill in that x spot one way or the other. Okay. In a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, x, x, x roots of two. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, x, two, x, and x roots of three. Uh, there are some things that help me to remember them. This has a square root of two in it and two of the sides are equal. Uh, in the 30, 60, 90 right triangle, all three sides are different and it's got a three. <clears throat> all right, so how would I use those? Here are two examples. This would be the kind of thing that you might see on the SATs or a quiz in your geometry class um, or what have you, okay? Uh, I'm given five, I have a 30 over here. So I know this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. I'm just gonna take my pattern and kind of rotate it or orient it so that the triangle looks the same way. It's in the same orientation as I see on the page here. Five is my short leg, which means the long side, the hypotenuse will be two times five or 10. And this side over here, this longer leg, I leave that number alone, five, but I attach to it a square root of three. That's my final answer. Over here in isosceles right triangle land, my pattern is x, x, x roots of two. So three, three, three roots of two. Just like that. All we're doing is recognizing patterns and writing the numbers in the appropriate places. Uh, let's do a couple more examples. So in this one, I'm actually given the longest leg, or the hypotenuse, the longest side. So I kind of have to reverse engineer a little bit. If 12 is 2x, then what was x? Doesn't take me too long to figure out that that was 6. If you like visuals, just imagine your whole big equilateral triangle. 12 is the whole side. 6 has to be half of that whole side. Um, and then my weird leg is 6 times the square root of 3. Um, on this one, I'm given 5, 5 five roots of two. The, these sides are always equal. The hypotenuse is going to be greater. Sometimes we're given the side that has a square root on it. And then we're, again, we're just kind of extrapolating or reverse engineering. If, if I already had x roots of two, what was x? So if x roots of two is seven roots of two, x is seven, and these legs are just seven. Um, then sometimes we get these kind of funky things. This might be our last example here. This has a square root of two on it, but that doesn't mean it has to be the hypotenuse. 
if I look at my pattern, the, the right angle, both of the things that touch the right angle are my congruent sides, x and x. So that means this side down here is also three roots of two. So my hypotenuse will be three times the square root of two times the square root of two. You might be able to get away with that as a final answer in your class, but I, I bet we can make this a little bit simpler. The square root of two times the square root of two would be the square root of four, that's just two. So this becomes three times two or six. That would be my final answer. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, check out my other videos if you're stuck on any other math concepts and thanks for watching.